13th floor. floor. The 13th floor. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 13th floor where the furniture isn't always the best, but the views are amazing. Look at that smile. Look at that. He's like a kid in a caddy store. <laughs> okay, Phase on over there. I am your moderator, B. Jones, and I'm here with my guys. Phase on. What's going on, bro? What's going on? I am um, happy to be here, man. I, I, I miss weeks work travel, um, but I'm excited. I, I love to be here. I love to, uh, to listen, share, and say some crazy things. So I'm back, baby. I'm right there with you. What is this never say no to Domo? Oh, Domo Arakato. Never say no to Domo. Jay Dice, what's happening, man? What we- <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's going on, y'all, man? It's, uh, like Art said, man, it's, it's just a pleasure to be back, man. You know, work, school, uh, the grind kind of keeps you preoccupied, but it's good to be back. Easy. Mojito Freshito. What's going on, bro? Hey, man. I am the rock, 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 rock. Always here, baby. Always nestled in on the 13th floor. Y'all know what it is, man. Fresh is here. Fresh is here. That that, that might be true, man. I think you're probably the only person that hasn't missed the episode yet. Ain't no might be, baby. Check (laughs) (laughs) We got to check the tape. Consistency. Okay, man. How you feeling this morning? I'm here, man. I guess uh, we must have got some bad reviews or something for last <laughs> last podcast episode. Where's the normal host? Yeah, yeah. Where's Where's the normal host? Kick this guy off. <laughs> really? This guy up something. So I don't know, but I'm good. I'm here. Easy, I'm man. We well, my regular role. Yeah, there you go. There you go, man. Hey, we got a lot of stuff we want to get into, man. First things first, man. I want to talk about how the NFL has lost their mind once again with this. Uh, New policy, you know, you take a knee, you getting fined, or you what what uh, the 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 organization gets fined, um, or you have the option of staying in the locker room, um, and it's such a major flex of power that it it seems to be actually illegal at this point in time because the the rule was passed without even consulting with the players union. Um, I, first I want to give uh, kudos to the Jets um, coach ownership. Because uh, he's already come out and made the statement that he will pay for any players who get fined for taking that knee. Uh, just like you said, I think it's very odd that a uh, ruling like this can come down without any player involvement because we already know how um, prevalent the issue is, right? And I want to call it an issue as as much as, uh, you know, the, the stance that, that players are taking and to think of a country where we're supposed to have freedom of speech and something continually as simple as taking the knee, not as a sign of disrespect, but as a sign of not feeling that this country is living up to what it says that it's supposed to is, is really just eye opening. You know, um, one of the owners last year talked about the, uh, players well he called them the it's like the the prisoners running the prison right so the fact that he creates that um analogy lets you know the thought process of these the majority of these owners and that they still at the end of the day feel that they are plantation owners working with slaves and so it's just eye-opening looks to be another year of nfl um protest at a minimum, if I mean, maybe if anything, uh, I was speaking with my business partner and he was talking about showing all his NFL love to the Jets simply because their ownership has already come out and made that statement. But to me, I'm more on the, you know, NFL as a whole really has some, has a lot, a lot of making up to do for me to feel that I want to participate in watching their uh, entertainment any further. And it's, it's funny that you mentioned, you know, the whole comment. I think that was Jerry Jones, wasn't it? It was Jerry Jones. That said the, uh, the inmates running the prison. Because another caveat to this is that the NFL has empowered the individual teams to come up with um, punishments and fines and whatnot. And that reminds me exactly of Jim Crow because it, was it wasn't so thing. much – the 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 federal laws about slavery it was the state laws that were the worst things um and you just empowered now all these owners and these groups 
to do what they see fit to keep their players in line. So you are a hundred percent correct to borrow your statement. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see what happens from here. And I think uh, Brett shared an article where they were talking about uh, freedom of speech and because it's a business, there's some crossover there where that may not necessarily be the avenue they can go down, but it's, it's going to be so interesting, man. That's what they always do, right? Is, is, those with with money and power figure out the ways to find those loopholes to go ahead and be slick about how they're able to enforce their power. You know, and I, if that's the case and they can get this thing passed and find the legalities of it, I'm fine with that. Because at this point, I think it's imperative that we take these moments and this this what's happening right now and look at the, why why am I even playing in this league? You know, I don't think it's a far-fetched idea for some of our millionaires and billionaires to come together and create a league if they so wish to. I don't think it's a far-fetched idea. Um, setting up the infrastructure, you know, it'll probably be daunting because you have to play, have arenas and, th- and places to play the games. But when it comes to the infringement upon your rights and your ability to voice your opinion, you're giving a whole section of America the ability to voice their opinion about something but my opinion all of a sudden is not valid. It's not valid at this point. So if that's what comes out of it, I am completely okay with that. Oprah, Jigga, Diddy. Hey, Diddy was Kaepernick. already trying to buy um what the Panthers, right? The Panthers, yes. Yeah. yeah. That that fell through. He didn't get the opportunity to do that. But I'm I'm a hundred percent in agreement where it's it's from moments like these that you have those, you know, big changes. There's already been talks about creating um uh, a, a league with minority owners, you know, more majority. The majority of owners are minorities, I guess is the easiest way to put it. But it's, um, you know, that's something Tupac was talking about before he passed away. He had these big dreams of almost like um, his thought process was that the entertainers would be the owners of the teams in order to be able to better infuse in the community. So it'd be like the Snoop Dogg. NFL team, but it was because people already love Snoop, so you know people would turn in to support Snoop. And then on top of it, it would be, um, you know, like the Jay-Z uh, NFL team as well, because then it's about getting that cross um, state lines love, but also having those head figures that are um, attracting, you know, new um, viewers and everything like that. So I think that would be definitely very interesting it's kind of well I won't say kind of because I feel the NBA does a great job of handling issues like this or handling um, moments like this again I don't want to call it the issue because I don't believe it is but it's like um, Ice Cube with the big three right where that opportunity of breaking off something that can be successful in some type of way while granted he is using um players past retirement or that are not going to are not making it into the league anymore but it's still very entertaining and he's found a way to capitalize on you know people's love for sports at the end of the day well two things i think that 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 tupac um note was in the movie which i didn't know that again so you said it again reminded that that was something that he was doing in the background and two I, I think just like Elon Musk and, you know, some of those big players that Vince McMahon had in his back pocket, because he's bringing back the XFL oh, next yeah. year. It's supposed to be the process. And I think this is the perfect opportunity for him to actually take advantage of that opening that's there. So I it's kind of crazy. I think that's partially exactly what he's doing, right? Because Vince is a, <laughs> a, a super strategic businessman. Yeah. One, and don't take for granted the power that the uh, – 30 for 30 that they ran Mm -hmm. last year and the resurgence in um, new visibility of the XFL that, you know, got the pop back stirring where it was like, Oh man, I do remember that. And Mm -hmm. people all of a sudden like, Oh, and and like I said, Vince doesn't, doesn't (laughs) uh, hold back. And as soon as he sees blood in the water, he's like, man, let's jump on it. (laughs) it So I'm definitely interested. And and I think, and I want to do this because it seems like we always get into some type of sports theme in our episodes, but I want to take it from being a sports theme to just looking at these guys as employees. And they're in a very interesting situation because this is their livelihood. So they have to be very careful about how they go about um, voicing their concerns 
voicing their um, opposition to, to this new rule. So really and truly, um, just like a lot of businesses and a lot of uh, industry in the United States, uh, they have a union. And basically, the union was not consulted before they went ahead and passed this. So these guys, it's in their best interest to work through the union absolutely, um, to, to get this shot down. Um, but if you just think about them as employees, one of the changing things in the American environment is the consumer. And what are we as consumers going to do to help combat this? Because here is an employer that doesn't treat their associates well, um, their employees well, and should we give them our business? So I got into an exchange with a IG uh, uh, intellect, right? Yeah, a IG intellect on the situation. And he was trying to say that, oh, you know, uh, black people boycotting the NFL isn't going to do anything because we're only 15% of the, uh, the earnings oh, of the 15% NFL. 15% of, of, of how much? Right. 15% of how much? What, 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 what does that come out to? <laughs> <laughs> and my thing was, okay, well, one, what's the percentage of black players? That's one. Two, even if it's 15%, do, do you think that they're really going to give you the, the true number that we really impact? And his whole thing was, well, if the players aren't going to do anything, I'm not going to limit my entertainment factor for somebody that's not going to fight with me for something that, that directly impacts them. It doesn't really impact me. And I'm just like, see, this is exactly why, um, right. as a people, we, we will never, mm, at, right. because of that type of thinking. And I was thinking that this person might have been a younger person, but he he's he's in his forties. So it's like, man, you you're so deaf, dumb, and blind that you don't understand what you're saying right now is ridiculous. Cousins because, a crab in a barrel, right? Go, go, going back to the whole slavery mentality, yeah, we were for entertainment and we were for labor. And I'm sure they had the same mentality. Well, if they don't stand up and fight for themselves, why should we? So let's just keep making money. And let's just what, is that what the pay. dudes in the house were saying, right? That's what the guys in the house were saying. Was, ah, well, if they're out in the field, they ain't going to fight. I mean, what, what we need to fight for. Right. Exactly. So, you know, man, it, it's just sad. And I, I do think in all things, social activism or whatever, it is on us. It's on us with the media. You know, stop watching their shows. If the media doesn't get the ratings that they need to get, they're going to have to change their content. It's the same thing for any business. If they don't change the way that they choose to do business or the way they treat their employees or their customers, then don't support them. They will have to change what they do. It's That's the most American way that there is out there. And I feel like when we truly adopt that type of thinking, not only will we improve ourselves as a people, but we will improve America overall. And if you guys don't believe that, you know, um, what content will change and sway uh, uh, what a channel produces, just go ahead and turn to music television and video hits one. That's MTV and VH1, all video based <laughs> channels that started all about music and videos. And now you are hard pressed to even find one music mm -hmm. video on, on any of those channels. Yeah, yeah. No, that happens every, I mean, like, I don't think that people realize that they have that type of power. Like we, the people have that kind of power. I mean, it happens all the time when you're in just history has shown, I think the, um, the social rights movement or civil rights movement, excuse me, uh, with MLK, he pushed like, yo, don't buy their stuff. You know, I mean, don't shop there. And when they did that, signs came down. And maybe it wasn't to the effect that they would have wanted, but it's just history has shown. And you know, when you look back and we can apply that same principle today. So definitely on the, uh, hit the uh, head on the, the nail on the head, okay, with that one. Not only that, I think it, it speaks to a point that you made a while ago, Carol, about um, doing things that n not necessarily impact you, but will impact others. So... The NFL players, they already have a, a split in support amongst their own group. You know, you have the Drew Breeses of the world saying, I'm a patriot. I'm going to stand. I'm going to put my hand over my heart. But then you have a Chris Long who gets it and understands that it's a monetary decision at the end of the day. And I'm one to believe that I don't necessarily know that 
we're going to make the big, the biggest financial impact. But 15% of $40 billion is a lot of freaking money. And any company year over year that's looking to grow hmm. typically wants 10% yeah. is you lose, you lose 15%. That's a prop. That's yeah, a they're about to let go of 15%. Yeah. They're not about to let him. money too important. They're not about to let go of 15%. Right. And so for this IG personality to not understand the impact of us supporting them in this journey, because I think the Malcolm Jenkins of the world and the rest of the players union are going to fight this battle on the appropriate turf and win. Not only, not just because of this being almost illegal as far as the collective bargaining is concerned, but they also have, I'm pretty sure the evidence that was used, and we're going to segue into Colin Kaepernick's uh, collusion lawsuit in a second, but the evidence that was gathered or the poll that was used to figure out who's watching what and who feels Colin Kaepernick should be on the team and is it impacting the, the NFL and all of that stuff, that more or less was more than likely used to make this decision. Right. So, and, 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 and I'm going to help you transition to that, that Colin Kaepernick thing because that, that's how I actually started entertaining this person because you guys know I don't, I'm not going to engage any tough guy, whether it be from an intellectual or physical standpoint on, on social media. But this individual said, Oh, this is all cap's fault because cap thought (laughs) he he was going to strong arm the league into signing him to a better contract. And he tried this just to get attention. I was just like, his fault. I appreciate you. Cap. Wow. It really is your fault. you're, You're really drinking the, 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 the slow killer is what you're drinking because how do you see it that way? Like, this this isn't what he set out to do. He set out to have his silent protest that people would know why he's doing it. It had nothing to do with the NFL. It it was about hey, let me do this. This is going to bring light to social injustice. Yeah, about and, and, and the yo. NFL chose to make it about oh, what is he doing? Then for their convenience, of course, forty five jumped in and made it about. Politics, yeah, right. say cap, cap mm-hmm. patriotism, even at all. Think about cap wasn't at all envisioning this point to where he's been pushed to. Cap wasn't even thinking it was going to be a, a true issue or something that was going to, you know, cause an uproar, right? It isn't like this is the first time anybody has taken the knee. Um, during the Pledge of Allegiance in, in the history of NFL, right? It's only because of the, the way that it was defined afterwards when it was really like, well, why did you do it? And, and the fact that it was um, perceived as being against America and, and, and oh, you're against the flag instead of absorbing what he was really just, well, no, it was just a personal feeling at that moment. I just kind of felt like, you know, I kind of, had 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 enough and, and had the thought process of, well, wait a minute, all of this stuff that is saying, I really don't feel that way. Let me just go ahead and take a knee, you know, more representation of what I feel is my fallen soldiers as far as, you know, the minorities that are lost uh, all the time, that that was really more his, his thought process. He had no envision of being like, you know what, I'm about to be the next Martin Luther King because I'm going to take this knee. That was not his process at all. But what is making him step into that Martin Luther role, right, is is the fact that he didn't back down when all of a sudden all the light got shown on him and that it became um, this this battle, right? And instead of him allowing them to push him into a space of agreeing and, and, and pushing it into talking about the flag, he made sure to stand, stand up and be articulate and continually saying no, while you guys keep on trying to push it here. No, my dad is in the army or, you know what I mean? I have all types of family members who are in the, the, the armed forces that a hundred percent, that is not what we're talking about here. And so being able to continuously sway that conversation and keep on shining the light back in the point that he wants is really where it came from. And going back to those NFL owners, it's, it's, you start feeling that, you know, it's, it's, wow, they really feel like plantation owners and, and really that history of what those owners have and makes you start to feel and wonder about what in the background was potentially that NFL momentum based on, right? Because if you watch the the Columbines of, of the players, you know, being observed, it's 
eerily similar to watching, you know, slave trade videos the, and seeing the, how they're out there. The combine. Combine. You, yeah, it's not the Columbine. <laughs> That's why I, had, right, I was like, where is he going? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I really hope the NFL gets this right because I don't want to miss another year of football, uh, especially with Deshaun Watson coming back, Patrick Mahomes playing. I think it's a lot oh, of good times. Nobody cares about the Bucs. Mm. Come on, man. Keep it moving. I ain't even mentioned the who? Bucks player yet. What are you talking about? Uh, well, I said Deshaun I... Watson, not Jackson. Oh, my fault. Sorry. Hey, just because y'all got y'all little Super Bowl, man, get out of here. Put him on mute. Yeah. Anyway, um, but I hope they get this right. Uh, hey, see, you made me lose my dag on point, man. Oh, that's the Eagles. You say you don't want to miss yep. another year of football. Keep it moving. Oh, because, but <laughs> in lieu of the collective bargaining agreement, um, the, the renegotiations in 2021, because I can absolutely see there being a lockout or um, what you call it. Uh, uh, they don't come to work. Come on, man. Help me out. Strike. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <I'll abide. laughs> uh, they Just don't come to work. <laughs> say, watch me struggle. Come on, man. Absolutely see a strike in that because it's going to be so much contention and, and dissonance or disagreements with the negotiations, especially if it ends up still being centered around these social injustice issues, man. So they, I know that I think the NFL, the players have a, um, have a, a huge upper hand going into this thing, but I hope they get it right, man, because uh, it'd be a shame unless, you know, the Oprah's, the Jay-Z's, the Stedman's, and Diddy's of the world come together to make this Benjamin movie. Stedman in those conversations. Right. <laughs> man, don't nobody be mentioning no, no uh, uh, side piece. <laughs> side piece need love too, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Side piece run the world. Mm. <laughs> anyway, moving right along, man. Uh, we had a uh, Harvey Weinstein man getting his day in court. I'm glad to see it happen. That seems to be the the cow. But at the same time, man, we got another one going down in Morgan Freeman. Man, look, I don't know if any of you guys have watched some of these alleged um, conversations and, and things like, I know the big one right now is the I believe she's a reporter or something, but she was mm. pregnant at the time and all of them were sitting at the thing and she was saying something, the way that he looked at me. And then they show the video. Look, again, I, watch the video yet. I am not at all condoning any type of sexual harassment. However, ladies, anytime a gentleman says something to you or gives you a compliment is not necessarily equating to sexual harassment. Further, when you watch the video, his co-star is in a conversation discussing something where it is open for his his um, statement to be represented for what his co-worker was saying or for what, you know, for the, the lady in the chair. But either way, it wasn't like some, I want to put it in your booty hole or something crazy. Like he was just, <laughs> it was just something like, ooh, I wish I was there for that too. Like that was that was literally the statement and she tried to say that oh he was talking about me because I was pregnant and and at the time and if you watch and look at his eyes so I was ready for like seeing some slimy snake dude looking stuff and I mean honestly I didn't see it to to so again it, it's not about uh, I just don't want it to be this new situation where sexual harassment is being equated to any minuscule type of thing that it just opens up Pandora's box of being um, having these accusations placed on you. Again, I am not condoning any type of sexual harassment. And if you feel uncomfortable, I believe it is your right to step up and say something. However, I do not feel that every little incident is some type of severe sexual harassment. So I think I think here is the challenge. The challenge is that as males, we will not be able to police that situation. Yep, it's going to have to be females self monitoring that situation because I think any allegation or insinuation may have to be investigated just because. Right. But I think they're going to have to start calling out the ones that are are are, are not valid the ones that are going to make it just look like people are crying wolf 
Yeah, um, like the the Ziri Azizi guy. Like I thought that was a yeah, a, Aziz, yeah, yeah. Where it's like you you came to my concert, you knew who I was, you already like we we had all these different conversations. You knew what time it was, and you you just got really just got upset because we weren't going to create a relationship out of this, not because of what happened. You know what I mean? And it's just... Where's the line? It, it's... It's, okay. yeah. it, it, it's just going gonna, it's, it's gonna to go too far to the other side and people that have legitimate claims, legitimate concerns, they're going to get overlooked because it's just going to be... We're, we're going to become desensitized to it. Yeah, right. it's going to get yeah. so polluted with all of these different... Oh, well... He was he was looking at me and I was wearing red and I found out later that he loves the color red and so I think that when he was looking at me two weeks ago it was actually sexual harassment. No, it wasn't. Stop. Like you can't just have because is, is looking at somebody considered like is like can you look at somebody and sexually harass them? Is that possible? You stare too long at, at this point. You stare too long. Like this. Harassment. Yeah, that's crazy. I feel insane. like especially in the workplace. And it's, it's it's probably, yeah. Yeah. Okay, work, workplace, yeah. It's probably okay, way sense. more subjective um, than it maybe should be. Uh, I know for me and seeing all of this stuff, it just makes me hypersensitive um, right. as to how I interact, converse, or anything with right. any female, whether it be on the street uh, and in the workplace, because you just never know. And I would hate for a simple misunderstanding to get snowballed into this whole sexual right. That's harassment the thing, thing right? right. right. You have that moment of you were just playing and and you know, we're just, oh man, girl, you looking good today. And just on some, you know, general just trying to be friendly, and then all of a right. sudden it turns into you got a phone oh, call from HR. Me I look good today. Right. Yeah. Like, Whoa, I but nah, I was just trying to, and now all of a sudden you get that that cloud over you, right? That, that, that new, um, Oh, well, he's, he's a scuzz ball. He's a slime bag. He's a, you know, it's like, no, I was, but I just wanted to, I was trying to be nice. And so it's, um, extremely interesting. Again, Morgan, I, I didn't get a chance to, to view the full, um, scope of the, the sexual harassment, but from what I read, there was no, uh, Bill Cosby weighted, type situations it seemed to all be more circuit or circus <laughs> focused around um things like uh you know oh he in meetings he would he would you know make slightly inappropriate comments or he would you know do um he would look at me when when we were having a meeting and, and things of this nature that it doesn't seem to be anything as progressive as um you know touching or um drugging anyone but again i don't want to devalue i don't know if that's the correct word but try to to you know discredit discredit my dog um the the weight of any type of sexual allegation you know sexual harassment allegation at the same time though in the quick um skim of seeing all of the different accusations for morgan i didn't see anything that initially stood out as some um, Oh my God! This is a uh, you know another um, you know serial uh, 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 sexual predator as Listen, much man. as it was. Is he's, uh, he's he's a dirty old man. No, that's <laughs> not it. Wow. Somebody figures. Somebody figures if they can take down the male dominated oh. symbol of God, mm-hmm. then nobody else stands a chance. Message. Anyway, keep it going. Yeah, I was going to say, I think some of this stuff might stem from those uh, previous allegations of him sleeping with his step granddaughter, granddaughter, um, yeah, which have both been vehemently yeah, denied on both parts. I mean, she's a, uh, it looks, to, it looks to be, she's uh, deceased at this point, but mm-hmm. she had vehemently denied those allegations or accusations at one point in time too. So they're trying to paint the, the dirty old man picture, but I don't know. I'm with you, man. I don't think God did it. <laughs> Thanks. Moving right along, man. Hey, so it's Men's Wellness Month here on the 13th floor. And to kick that off, we're going to try to give y'all some healthy food tips, man. We got a lot of great chefs on this podcast right now. Uh, Coach K included myself, Fresh Chito. I don't know, Jay, you be getting busy in the kitchen? I do what I does, man. I mean, I don't do nothing too crazy, but, you know, I try, hey. to, try to dibble-dabble where I can. 
That man said a, a towel is mandatory. Oh, you, yeah. You got to have a towel on your shoulder. You ain't, if you don't got a towel on your shoulder, you ain't cooking, bro. I'm a football player, so I typically put it in my shorts. But, you know, I'm, hey, I'm right there you, with you. got a towel. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> on our sanitary. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so what we want to offer, man, is some helpful tips, man, because I think a lot of us get into – and I, I think it's transitioning a lot nowadays, but we, we still have a lot of us that, you know, instead of uh, eating to live, we live to eat. You know, right. and it's a lot that we can do out there as far as research is concerned and, you know, healthier foods. I think one of the simplest things that I learned uh, once I started going from, you know, like regular food to more organic or natural stuff is what eggs to eat. Um, so, you know, and it's crazy because Walmart is probably not the best place to buy your organic or cage free eggs. I say that because you can tell how good an egg is for you if you look at the yolk. Now, I went to Walmart one day and got a carton of cage-free eggs. I probably shouldn't say that name. You should probably edit that out, um, <laughs> Fresh. But we're going to keep it going. I went into this retailer one day, got a carton of uh, cage-free eggs, and the, the yellower or more oranges, the, the yolk, um, signifies the diet that the chicken had. And so I got the – and I've, I've bought – Cage free organic eggs before and seen Trader Joe's great place to, to buy these eggs. They're typically pretty orange. But I get these uh yellow eggs from Walmart or these eggs from Walmart, crack them open. I'm like, yo, this is a this is a regular egg. Not only that, my daughter, she's real picky, right? But you would not think that your average eight-year-old will be able to tell the difference between a regular egg and an organic egg. However, I bought these eggs, and when I tell you she looked at them as like this. Is, these are not good and I cook them same way a little bit of cheese a little bit of pepper same way I do any other time and she automatically you know no I can't eat this this is not good so wow. just one little tip right there when you buy your eggs make uh, make sure you get a reputable retailer but look at look at it when you open it man once you crack that egg if that yolk so is not orange um, it's, it, it probably orange, didn't have like, the, like the oranger oranger so oh. you have like that nice bright yellow but then when you get into yeah. like that the deeper orange just yellow like almost going into the sun type of color then you know you got your good egg that's so right. so it's not necessarily that there's something wrong with the yellow yolk per se what it really says is that they've only been on one type of diet there's only one food which in most cases is probably going to be grain which grain isn't good for them grain isn't really good for us because we just can't digest it but digest it well the orange effect become comes from a varied diet where they get more exposure to carotene which makes it orange so the, ah. the diversity of the of the uh of their diet is what you're looking for because then you get the most nutrients out of it look at this yeah. guy absolutely man so like that's my health health tip for the podcast you guys got any others that you like to share with the listeners man grill your food if you put your food over that open flame, you know, you're going to get a lot more of those, uh, the fat and all the extra stuff to drip off and go ahead. And you're going to be able to um, take out some of those calories from your meal just like that. Not to mention what tastes better than something fresh off the grill. I see what you did there. Yeah. Fresh yeah. Off the grill. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and just, and just, 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 just to keep going, cause somebody's going to dig in, um, slow and low is the way to go. Yes. Sir. Um, when you try to get your grill up to high heat and you use a bunch of charcoal and all that stuff. Yes. It does create carcinogens and all that stuff. So slow and low, um, you'll see, uh, most of us on here when we do it, we, we tend to, uh, do that slow and low process. Some of us use wood. Um, some of us use smokers. So if you ever want to see um, some of our stuff, we usually go by the hashtag brothers and smoke. Um, so we, in any of our upcoming stuff, we will do brothers and smoke and we'll also hashtag 13th floor. There it is. There it is. Not looking too good for the grilling this weekend. You know, it is Memorial Day. Shout out to all our veterans and lost soldiers um, coming up. But uh, phase on. Yeah, well, wait, because we didn't talk about, so everyone's all on the, the grilling thing, and I'm just waiting to get my time in because you didn't. I was coming to uh, you right there, man. Any kind of respect on the cooking aspect because I don't post uh, anything about it. I am quite a 
Hey, <laughs> ramen noodles are great, bro. Them. You're absolutely right. You're excellent. They, they don't want to hear about them closet cookers, man. Show the people. <laughs> yeah, right. What you got? So good. I'll just lay down on a plate and on a table. Hey, man. Oh, wow. Please, so please. Please share with the people the benefits of putting cinnamon in your spaghetti sauce. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, cinnamon is, is a cure all be all. And do not, yeah, cinnamon is, is a great spice that is very underlooked um, and it hides the taste. And it also, if you're ever, okay, well, okay, here we go. If you're ever <laughs> in the house, he hit that dumpy. And someone, someone, there's a smell in the house you need to get rid of. There is nothing better than boiling a cinnamon stick. Grandma did that all the time. And turn it on, it will kill any smell in the house. Um, so that's one thing to put in there. But I'm going to go down to the, to the youth, to the baby aspect, because I've been baby chefing and making things. So um, the foods you're buying or foods you may buy in these stores that you get for, you can make it all yourself, dramatically cheaper, and with the same or even better taste without all the preservatives or additives to it. Absolutely. So make yourself like, just for instance, um, uh, Renze's mix this week. He's getting avocado. He's getting spinach. He's getting cucumbers, um, and he's getting some apple. And then on an off week, he has blueberries. He has um, spinach. He has spinach is a, is a core no matter what. Spinach is always there because it's important. Had that um, apple and um, what was some banana. So that's all made fresh in the pouches you can get. You buy the pouches yourself. You put it in the refrigerator. So don't think the, the quality of food you put for yourself, you got to put in the babies. Don't go out and buy everything because it's convenient. Sometimes making it in advance and taking it is the best possible way of doing it. Baby food and, don't even and look you good. you talking about organic foods. And I, I would, I'll take it one, one level up. Uh, Grass-fed beef, free-range chicken, uh, it, it, it is worth it. God, bird, baby. Investing that I mean, now will spew you from ST and it doubles at the doctor's office. <laughs> yes. yes. So look at it as an investment in your future. Absolutely. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw one in. Um I'm gonna go a quick side to the what you're drinking with the uh with the food. I'm gonna say water, man, just how important water is. Um something that you can do. It's called a uh, water induced thermogenesis to where you chug about 16 per 16 ounces, 16, 17 ounces of water at a time. And it actually increases your metabolic rate. Um, I think within about 10 minutes, have about by 30% having its full effect within about 30 to 40 minutes. So um, just chugging water, man. And just, you know, throughout the day and making sure you get that adequate, adequate amount of water inside of you because your body depends on it. So uh, definitely with the food aspect, but, Get that water and get stay hydrated. We just want to make sure that you guys, I know last time Jay was on, he talked about grounding. So don't go chugging now that, you know, 16 ounces while you ground and you might just self combust. You got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of energy transfer. You might short circuit yourself. <laughs> Catch a glitch or something. So be careful while you out there doing it, but still do it all the same. Stay, stay hydrated, y'all. Stay hydrated, people. Stay hydrated and stay up, man. We're going to be dropping different health tips this week, man. Uh, Food-related health tips to go along with the podcast. Uh, so, yeah, stay up with us at 13th Floor, please, on all your social media so you can get those tips so you can eat to live. Eat to live. Yes, sir. Uh, Faison, we coming back to you, sir, for your corner this week. And then I'm going to hit Fresh and Biz. It's the corner for Faison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um Simple, man. Simple. And, and as we go through everything we talked about today, um, don't forget a person's most, I'm sorry, don't forget a person's greatest emotional need is to feel appreciated. So through all these things and all is happening, at the end of the day, if you look at the root cause, it's most of the time going to be because a person needs to feel appreciated. So when you're going to somewhere, tell someone thank you, you know, give them a smile, whatever it may be, take care of them, but make sure they feel appreciated at the end of the day. Absolutely. Freshito and Bizaniso, what you got for us this week? So, last week, we discussed, you know, you had this great entrepreneurial ideal. You said, you know what, I'm going to take that leap. You started your Facebook page, started telling the people, like, you know what, I got this great new service or product, and I'm going to tell you, you already failed. Why? Because you didn't think about the fact that you need to have a marketing budget. 
Just because you have the newest thing since sliced white bread, it does not mean that anybody else cares, and especially the ones closest to you are going to care the least. So that means that you need to get the word out, right? So if you're going to have that Facebook page, you need to start making the dedication of creating what is called a marketing budget to go ahead and tell the people about what you were, uh, you know, what service or product that it is that you have. And so I want all of y'all entrepreneurs to take the first step before you even think of pushing this thing out the gate to have a dedication and an understanding that there is a need for a marketing budget, some way for you to relate to the people how great your service or product is in order for them to come to you and spend money. So that's the fresh tip today. If you fresh in biz, make sure you have a marketing budget. Other than that, you're failing. So don't fail, succeed, marketing budget. Let's go. Can we connect that dot for them? A marketing budget gets you a marketing plan, Ooh. which every <laughs> business needs. I was going to say that for next week, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to do a little you dance. You can run with that you. next week, sir. Yeah, yeah, oh, hey. it, it, exactly. Oh, there it is. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, you can get this podcast on Apple, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube. We got the videos dropping on Facebook, Instagram. Remember, we at 13th floor. Please, if you want to get connected with us on all social media platforms. YouTube. The U is back, baby. The U is back, baby. That. YouTube. <laughs> Video. YouTube. <laughs> Hey, don't forget hey. about Vimeo. All y'all forget about Vimeo. It's it's a great product. Vimeo has it's a great uh, platform. Yeah, it's 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 really worth taking the the opportunity to go ahead and check out some things. We have our own channel on on Vimeo. So yeah, if if y'all happen to you know mosey on over to that website, it would be okay if you stopped on the thirteenth floor. And if we do happen to hop on the grill this weekend, man, look out for them live videos. Uh, Brothers and smoke. I don't have a smoker yet because I don't have a house yet. But soon enough, I'll be coming with them tips. You have a grill, though, right? I absolutely have a grill. I got a little smoky. I don't have. I wouldn't necessarily call it a grill. I got one of them little twelve-inch joints that you got to kneel down and you know play with it. What? Oh, what? Uh, wow. Okay. Sorry Pause. about that. We're gonna exit out, ladies and gentlemen. Exit out. <laughs> yeah. Pause. But yeah, I got a little little baby grill. Um, and then I have a bigger grill, but I don't have really space for it. That cowboy man, joint. You somebody, remember the cowboy grill? Somebody's coming after us, man. They'll be all right, man. We like to have Your fun. Comments. We like to have fun. J Days. What's going on, man? You gotta take us home, baby. Oh, okay. No doubt. So man, um Yeah, because we don't know when you're gonna be here again. So I figured I would give up my right, you know, to close. <laughs> Plus, you know, Facts. the people was like, Facts. I guess throwing Carol out his chair or something last week. So yep. but no, man, to bring it all together as far as uh, going back to the um social injustices, man, I would say uh yeah, when one of us goes through, we all go through. You know what I mean? So if it's not, I understand that it may not be affecting you directly right now, but it will be affecting you indirectly in the future. So I would say it's not so much about race or skin color. It's about character. And if you feel that, you know, you wouldn't want to be treated that way, you feel that you wouldn't be wanting to go through what somebody else may be going through, it's our duty as a human being to stand up for that personnel. All right, and before and before we let Jay get away, um, if you struggle with managing your weight, uh, with being motivated to continue on that track, uh, Jay Dace is absolutely on that. I saw him doing uh, windshield wipers uh, yesterday. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that's when you're holding on to the pull-up bar. You got your legs up, and you take them from left to right. I saw Jay Dace doing that yesterday. So um, if you'd like to be motivated by Jay Dace, where can they follow you, sir? Uh, uh, IG uh, at J Days at J Days underscore encourages and likewise on Facebook at J Days underscore encourages also on YouTube uh, J Days encourages so, yo just hit me up let's go make it happen your health is a vital importance man hey J Days so encourage? when you miss them here you can find them there say that one more time first if you encourage I do my very best to you most definitely. <laughs> Hey, man, before we get out of here, man, we done for the regular stuff, man. I'm serious about this Infinity Wars, though, man. Somebody break this down for me and what actually happened, because I did miss Thor Ragnarok. I did not watch The Last Avengers or whatnot. I'm terribly confused as to how Thanos dies but doesn't die and kills half the planet, including Black Panther. Mind you, he got killed after having the best movie ever. Oh, bro, I was so mad. Why didn't they take out War Machine? Right? (laughs) I mean, I feel like by now everybody saw it. 
<laughs> just saw it. It's, it's been out like two oh, weeks. Oh. <laughs> I waited two weeks to see it. So if you ain't seen it by now, spoiler alert. I'm sorry, you missed it. They couldn't take. They couldn't take out War Machine though. Like, what does he do? Who the hell is War Machine? I never saw any of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. They pulled the freaking Vision. They just pulled the damn thing out of his head. Like, what? What's What's really happening? It's man. You. It's. The, the, the yeah, there's not enough time to try to yeah. explain the, <laughs> at all. And witness, man, there is no. What happened was death. Nothing but <laughs> death. You know, um, yeah, yeah, man, to try to jump into the comic book universe and explain mm-hmm. everything that was capsulated into that two hour. Um, and it was changed. It, it, it was modified dramatically. Oh, of course. Yeah, so modified dramatically. Yeah. Was it condensed immensely? Because I felt like this is probably one of the worst Marvel movies that they've made. No, no. what? You, no, no, you you had to watch lost. the other movies. Yeah. Next to Black yeah. Panther, this is like yeah. the best. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I say that because I haven't. I don't follow them in order. You aren't getting any jokes. Like, there's but, so many tie-in jokes that pass back. And, and, so, and that was it for me. So like yeah. all of the ones that I have watched, whether it been the second one and I didn't watch the first one, they still they all made sense. This right. one made absolutely no sense. Just because this one connects so much yeah, stuff. Yeah. This is this is but for this is ten years of build up for for this for this our movies. For real for fans our, of, hours. of of comic books and to really like yeah. you watch the progression of all the films that Marvel has put out from I believe when Iron Man came out, that was the mm-hmm. first one for this, you know, what all of these are right. together, you know, representing. And it's it's this is one of those like a real comic book and in and, and superhero lover film and it's historic as one of the first I don't know if the only one where you watch the villain win and yeah. are left with you know breathless at the end of the day in confusion that <laughs> ain't nobody gonna talk about how the hawk got bashed though the Hulk, sure, the Hulk got beat bad. down <laughs> yeah. so much. He was like, "No, hey, I don't want anyone." No, yeah, no pineapples. He pineapples. To come outside, <laughs> bro. He man, got man. work, yeah. bro. I'm in. That's Debo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. My thought was like, "No, <laughs> bro." I was like, "Now what? What?" Oh, so mad. I didn't even know he had a choice. That whole storyline, how how they they uh. The uh, World War Hawk changed like his anger. By the time he got to Thanos, it was a whole different beast. Um, so th- it did happen. He did, Hawk did get to the point where he was you no know, fearsome of coming out. That was a different storyline though. But yeah, it's it happened. But at that this point, if you were following like comic book episode four four hundred and forty seven. Yeah, it had been different. The whole Thanos snap thing was a whole different meaning behind why he did that, and where it's 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 good. But the tie in is. Uh, the way he tied it all in and got everyone going forward is amazing. If you went back, if you just watched Civil War, Thor Ragnarok, and you can probably skip Guardians 2, but Guardians 1, you probably yeah. would grasp a lot more information about what, what so happened. I gotta go watch Ragnarok, because I didn't know, I didn't even know that was Thor until like 30 minutes of him talking. I didn't know that was Captain America, because they all got beers and stuff now. <laughs> like, yeah. yo, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are these people? <laughs> when they got a lumberjack? I don't even know. <laughs> Paul Bunyan out here. What Is the that hell? the brawny man? <laughs> <laughs> Why he ain't got on no flannel, son? <laughs> Yo, it was crazy. So I gotta go and back Thanos, and watch. Yeah, Thanos isn't dead, so don't worry about that. that was well, just, I know he I'm isn't dead. He's like no. at home chilling because he just yeah. accomplished his mission. So he, he he there are so many theories out there on how they're going to do it. I mean, only only you saw the end, no credit, right? Yeah, yeah. Thanos will return or something like that. No, with the with the. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel? Is going to be one of the next uh, movies. But listen, listen again. I, I might have missed that. I stayed all the way at the end. end. People with a marketing budget, the whole women's empowerment, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and now you look at who do they put out there that may potentially come save the day? Captain Marvel, one of the most powerful women figures in the Marvel comic universe. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I peeped so, that. I peeped oh. that. Okay. Mm. Again, get yourself a marketing budget. Hey. Message. There it is. We out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for listening with us here on the 13th floor where the furniture isn't always the best, but the views are amazing. The 13th floor. floor.
the 13th floor. 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 floor.